Hello everyone, this is Anne from Odilcina Scrap. This is the second video of this file folder creation, so if you missed the first one, I'm going to put the link in the description below. What I'm showing right now, it's uh, just showing you all the items that I had already printed and uh, they are kind of leftovers from kits that I've used in the past and um, they're all in the neutral colors kind of they are kind of perfect to create the backgrounds so i'm gonna start with that pile of paper to create some backgrounds and you're gonna see that i have kind of a process in three steps typically the first step is to create the backgrounds uh, pages like i'm doing right now and then some um, design papers added here and there and then adding some uh, ephemeras or fussy cut elements. Decorating an, an altered file folder like this one, it's a big project. I mean, for myself, I worked as hard to create that. And even sometimes it feels like more than creating a junk journal because th there is this interaction between all the tabs and when you add a paper, you see it through other um, layers. I mean, when you open the flap, you see something that needs to match with the other flap and that kind of stuff. So it's not easy. So what I'm doing is I don't necessarily go by, um, by doing decorating the cover or the decorating the inside. I gathered a bunch of neutral papers to create some backgrounds here and there and I'm trying. In this case I found that this one looked better there inside the flap so it's been added there. So what I'm gonna do for the next minutes is I'm gonna add some background papers like that where there's just scriptings or or typewriter uh, documents that kind of stuff and i'm just gonna add them here and there among the file folder not necessarily decorating in order i go by i love that paper that would be great in that file folder where does it fit <laughs> And the perfect example is this coming page. I had done a bunch of modeling paste on book pages, like this one, and I want to use it in the file folder because this is just too cute and the color is just perfect and it's neutral. So I found where it would fit and I'm putting it there. So see, I'm inside the file folder. I'm not on the front page anymore I just make it fit somewhere and I glue it you can see how I measured it a little bit and this is just because this book page is so old it's so fragile that it tears like you fold it and it tears so um, I just applied it there and uh, I fold it following the tiered side of the flap and that makes it almost perfect isn't it cute so i really love to include music sheets in all of my projects and if i have some done the modeling paste on book pages on music sheets on coffee stain paper these are elements that you can't go wrong with that they're cute, they had they had the detail that everybody loves. So I try to add some in every project. And in order to do that, what I do is at some point I gather a bunch of book pages or music sheets or coffee stain paper. I take my modeling paste, the stencils and I do a bunch. If you've never done any of that, I'm going to put the link in the description below on how to do that, the modeling paste, I mean. And now, this is funny, but this is how it works all the time for me. I, I had that um, birdhouse paper printed on kind of a tracing paper, and it was there in my pile of papers 
not at the good place at all. It, it's a mis it's it's a mismatch, right? But because it's on my table, I found a place in that file folder, and it's pretty cute there. So this is how it works all the time. If I leave things, cute things, in my on my table, I use them because not that I'm too lazy, but it's there. It's cute and it fits. Why I would search for something else, right? So this paper was not planned at all. It was in my neutral papers pile by mistake. And here you go, I found a place for it and it's pretty cute. So let's keep going on with the neutral papers to create kind of backgrounds. So this paper, I tried it on the first page of the file folder and I, it didn't fit, I didn't like it. But now when, I, when I'm opening the file folder there, I'm thinking it's going to create a good background for the, the first, the file folder first layer. So this is how I measure. I place it and I try to make it the good size. It's just eyeballing. I fold, I tear, uh, and then of course I need to add the ink. But uh, at the end, it looks like that and it's all good this is a paper that i wanted to use in a previous project probably because it was already tiered and it was already inked so i just needed to tear it a little bit more to make it up to size with this project and it's gonna be just perfect this paper is really uh, a, a really thin paper so i try to apply the glue only on the uh, the sides and if i want some glue in the middle i apply it not on the paper so to make sure it doesn't seep through and leave any marks i apply it on on the paper i'm going to glue it to as you saw me doing i am back to the first page of the file folder because i didn't decorate anything there yet I ended up uh, decorating the inside of the flap, going inside the file folder with my papers. And now I found that music sheet and there's some uh, embossing, uh, the modeling paste there again. And I just thought it would be just perfect for the cover, the, the top of the file folder. I just love music sheets and my favorite music sheets are those um, books from old church like the Anglican Church, Presbyterian churches where they have those books with the music notes and the lyrics and it's always like the perfect size book and it's always like a really thin paper so it's perfect to create paper ruffles and it's uh, not too big and um, not so thin as well. It's, I just love those books. And if you can find one, here you go. You're good for a good two, five years. <laughs> like those, those uh, music books have like hundreds of pages. So you're good to go for a while. And even if those books are old, I still coffee stain the, the pages. When I do coffee stained papers, I do a couple of those music sheets at the same time, so I never run out of them. So now I'm not even sure what I'm going to do more than that page, but I keep going on with adding some backgrounds of neutral papers. I found that old receipts, we, since day one that I do junk journals, it's there, you have plenty of digital kits that has some. So I have some in one of my digital kits as well. And I'm gonna use it to create a little booklet. And it fit perfectly in one of those thin uh, flat that I had there. So I'm just taking one piece of, uh, one piece of um, coffee stain paper and I'm cutting it to sides with my ruler, that's all. And now I wanted to attach it. So there's different ways you can 
I guess you can glue all the layers, but you can staple it too, and I love staples. The only bad side about the staples is that you have to hide the staple on the other side. So if it's already decorated, this is not an option anymore, unless you staple the stack, like the little booklet, and then you glue the last page. That's another option. But in this case, I could just staple it through the file folder and I'm gonna hide it later on. So now I'm tearing it to size and I'm inking everything and then I'm gonna use either a lace, um, fabric, uh, sari silk or anything just to hide the staple on the other side. So I ended up with a chiffon silk and as you can see, it's gonna hide the staple on the, the good side of the flap and it's gonna hide, it's gonna decorate the top as well as hiding the staple on the good side of the little booklet there. I love booklets. I guess we never have enough of those. They they do good decorations and they are journaling spots or list spots or for whatever you use your journal later on or the fire folder, they are always useful and they're great to, to look at, kind of flip through, look at, and it adds dimension because there's multiple pages. So, this is something we, I guess, we can do over and over, specifically in our file folders, where all we want to do is create more interaction, like flips and flops and things to go through. So adding a little bit of lace and um, decorating it, and that will be it. This page will already be decorated. That was not my plan, but I got the idea and I just went all the way through uh, the final decoration, even with a little flower, a little uh, lace flower that I've cut one by one. So this is how I work on a file folder. I try to to kind of follow a process in my mind, but I can always deviate a little bit and do a little extra and then I can come back. These are now my second sets of papers that I'm gonna try to use. And these are my legal size paper format that I've printed on, instead of on legal size, I've printed them out on uh, regular letter size paper but with the option uh, not full page just the fit to size so I had to trim the white border everywhere and I want to use them as design papers for this file folder they're pretty neutral I love the designs but I ended up having lots of flips and flaps on the landscape format and they were not as great, so uh, it was hard to, to do. And I had those plastic cut girls just beside me, and I decided, wow, maybe I could put a little girl there. And look at that, when I moved that little girl, which is, by the way, my favorite, I kind of really liked it. I love that lady too, and the bluish, uh, greenish, but that little girl there. See, my initial idea was to put on the left side and then I moved it on the right side and I really love it. So I'm thinking this is what I love. I'm gonna glue this down there and I'll come back later on to decorate the left part of the music sheet page. Well, flap. So now I don't know what to put um, on that flap, but I got the idea maybe I could use just a fabric. It adds more dimension. It is not lace. You don't see through. And I love fabric. So I'm using those flower patterns from my fabric. Of course, I just can't get enough of it still at this moment. Because remember, 
it's new in my shop, but it's new for me too. I got those fabric at the same time than you, almost. Like, I took a week to start preparing, cutting the fat quarters and creating my listings. But during that time, I was really busy with doing that. So I didn't really play that much with that fabric. So I'm still really in love with the fabric. So you might see me using it for a while still. I hope you love it. It's really shabby chic, right? It's the pink and anyway, I'm um, using the hot glue so I can create folds and kind of crinkles on the fabric. So by itself, that fabric is kind of a good background with dimension and I, I won't even need to put anything more there, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to end up gluing something else there at some point. Right now, um, I'm not even thinking of that, but look how it creates a perfect background. So uh, don't forget when you do fussy cutting, it's always a good idea to to add some ink just to remove the white of the paper that we can see on the sides. It adds a little dimension as well because it kind of creates a dimension effect just by the fact that it's darker sides. So I'm gonna glue it there and I'm gonna see how to finish everything, but I know I love that. So the big challenge here is to put the glue under the, the girl, but not um, on the side where it should not have any glue. So you start maybe by half of it when you know almost where it's gonna be glued. And then when you open the flat, I'm going to go add more glue just like that um, by inserting the, the glue tip on the edge and adding the glue there. So this way it's going to be glued totally fine. It's always a good idea too if you want to hide the white of the fussy cut and create a little bit more dimension. Those cheesecloth are just perfect. This is the grade 90 cheesecloth, but the other one would be great too, or any tool, any little like really soft and uh, hairy um, fabric would work too. Even a, a herbal tea bag, that would be perfect. So it adds some dimension. It's not too contrasting. It's not too big. And when you open the flap, it hides the fussy cut girl, the white back of the fussy cut girl. Because this is important for me that when I open my flaps or my junk journal pages that I don't see the white. I just don't love the white. Somehow, it, it, I need that finishing touch. So now I'm back to the left side because I didn't do anything and I thought this lace would be great. And while I was playing with it, I just had the idea to maybe cover the spine of this five folder. I know I said in the first video that I wouldn't cover this one, but this lace, look at this. This is a Crafty Me Shop lace and it's so lacy and so kind of Victorian and it's in the beige and white together and it just fit perfectly. So to make it a little bit less straight line, I'm cutting the edge. And while I was cutting the edge, I discovered, well, to my surprise, but it's not that much of a big surprise, but um, you want to use your fingers to kind of tear a little bit and damage the sides. And I discovered that there's two layers of lace there, kind of a tool and a little lace on top. Maybe that's why it is so cute. It's, it's a double lace kind of lace anyway, with embroideries on it. I just love it. And so I decided that the first layer of the lace, I would trim it a little bit shorter than the other one and not in a straight line. So I try to follow a little bit the design of the lace. And this adds a little bit more dimension. You see, we have two laces there. They're not cut the same way. And um, anyway, it's really, if you, grab that lace from Crafty Me Shop or if you can grab some in one of her sales, 
um, you're gonna love it. You're gonna love it. It's a good buy. So I'm gonna use my uh, glue gun to to glue it down. What I love about the glue gun is that you stick it and it holds really, really well. So again, you just put the glue on small length, you apply it, you flatten it really well with your spatula or bone folder, I guess, whatever you have, and then you move to another section. Because if you try to put the glue on the whole lines all together, it might dry a little bit too much and then it will glue, but you won't be able to flatten the glue and you're gonna have some bumps. So for the other, when I have a thin lace like that and I just want to make sure it's not bulky and I don't create bumps with the hot glue, I'm also using the art glitter glue, which holds really well specifically on thin laces like that when you apply the glue on uh, the embroidery. So for the middle section, it's gonna be, be more thin than using the hot glue. So I'm using the art glitter glue and then I come back to the hot glue for the two lines because it's, it's easy to follow the lines too with the glue. But as you can see, all the glues are fine. I just have my favorite ways to use every glue and I just go and play among the glues. So for the same lace, you can see that I've used two different glues, but don't worry if you don't have that, you can just use a regular glue and it's gonna work fine. But look at the result, it is just so cute. And I know, I what I love about that is now I know that my spine will be a little bit more um, robust. I mean, it won't tear easily because that lace will hold everything into place, even if the paper would want to kind of tear at some point. So the other thing that I love a lot is those little labels that I've started to include in, in a lot of my kits and um, they are really versatile. They are colors that you can use everywhere. And I love to use them just to create a tab like that. It's a cute decoration and uh, I don't know, I love them. You can put them on any sides, everywhere, more than once in a project. And it's like laces, you, you don't have too much of those. As you can see, I'm now decorating the left side of the music sheet. I'm gonna use those fancy yarns. And those fancy yarns where when they have like uh, bows in it and they're not easy to create a bow with it, I just use them to add more to the official bow, which will be a seam binding right now. So adding them not to do the bow, but under the bow, and create more kind of tails to the bow. And that's a way I love a lot to create them. Some of my fancy yarns are perfect to create bows, but some are not really to create bows, but they're perfect the way I'm gonna use it, as you can see in this project, to add more tails to a bow that you're gonna create. Because whenever you create a bow, if it's too bulky, or the, the chiffon silk or sari silk is too large, the middle of the bow it is too bulky. And this is something I just don't like. So I prefer adding, like you see right now, I'm doing my length and when I cut my fancy yarns, I don't cut straight, I go with, okay, this is the end of this design the little bow or the little uh, dot of fabric. And so this way, all the length are not exactly the same. I create one knot. This will hold them together and I'm gonna glue that knot down to hold it on the page. And I'm using just either the seam binding or a chiffon silk or a sari silk that is not too large to create a bow and as you can see, 
it looks like I've used multiple yarns together, but the bow is only the seam binding and I'm using the fancy yarns in the background. I hope I'm not too confusing with, <laughs> with my instructions, but at least you, you have a visual. So don't forget, you should always add a little bit of tulle or cheesecloth to add more dimension. And this is my trick to, to cut the, the tulle not in a straight line. So I fold it and then I cut right through all those folded tulle and it creates automatically a not straight side. And that's how I decorate. I create some folds to create some dimension and I just glued them layers by layers. So starting with the bigger piece, the polka dot tool, then the cheesecloth, and then the fancy yarns, and then the little bow. And the end result is just so lovely. I just can't get enough of those. I hope it's the same for you. <laughs> it seems to me like I'm always playing with the same elements, the polka dot tool, the cheesecloth, the fancy yarns, uh, chiffon silk, seam binding, laces, but this is really what I love and I just don't get enough of seeing those. So. That's all. Now, now that it's glued, I use my scissors to kind of trim it again, just so it makes sense. It's not too large, not too long, not overlapping with the modeling paste. So I love the front, and now I'm thinking, what can I do on this side? And I wanted to create another booklet, just to have more spots for writing, um, writing notes, journaling, whatever, a list of things to do or to remember. So, and what I love about that, it's that I can make a square. So I picked four papers, uh, four because more than that, it might become a little bit too bulky and less than four, well, it might be a little bit, not enough. And I'm going to... Um, I'm going to create this, the square with one sheet, but I'm going to keep and fold the same way each of the four papers. So at the end, I'm going to have kind of three stash of four papers that are the same size. So I can create other booklets with those leftovers. So this is why you see me piling on the same size of the leftovers together. This is an half page, so maybe this one I can cut it into more, but at least they're all together. And when I selected my paper, I took one that had a little design on from a vanilla doily and some that are a little bit more whitish or some that are a little bit more darker. There's nothing really dark there. I love my coffee stain paper to be pretty light. Um, but anyway, I have kind of four different paper style and I'm gonna have four different paper style for um, the leftovers as well, those two stash stack there. This is how I can use my scraps for other booklets, probably in that file folder later on, but right now we're gonna just use them. And this time I'm gonna use my sewing machine to do like a zigzag sewing line, like you see there, to attach all those four pages together. And then the only thing I need to do is glue down, glue down the, the booklet on the file folder. I could have used like three staples as well. That would have worked great. And then I would have glued the last page. That works great too. And now I just need to decorate the top of the booklet to, to add some dimension and to hide the sewing line. Well, there's nothing wrong with showing the sewing line, but Anyway, I love to decorate. So the base is 
again a cheesecloth. It's just the leftover that I had and I tried it there. I tried a couple of fancy yarns to see which one was my favorite because they're all great. I just wanted to find my favorite. And then I'm back with the papers on my table and I'm just looking at different options because what I figured with time is that sometimes I try something and by surprise I really love it so I always allow myself um, a couple of ideas to try before settling down with an idea and my favorite was this little one squarish a square on a square I guess I loved it and it was already inked and everything because probably I tried it for another project and I didn't keep the option so now I'm just gonna use it it's never too late and I'm gonna use the cheesecloth again glued with the odd glue so the folds are holding well and I can create more folds by gluing it and to glue the fancy yarns I'm just gonna put some glue in little spots you see I've done a spot of glue at the beginning of the yarn in the middle and I just the way they placed themselves was great already so I'm just adding spots of glue to hold everything down into place but keep between between the the glue spots some fluffiness just need to make sure that they, they are all glued somewhere so they can hold well but look at that there is a little uh, greenish uh, lay, um, yarn there that is really cute and now even if I've put some cheesecloth behind the girl the fussy cut girl I didn't like to see the silhouette of the girl there through the cheesecloth and I thought I could decorate a little bit more so I'm gonna use my flowers the fussy cut flowers to uh, add more but I couldn't just hide it all so I'm doing just a little line of polka dot fabric and this will hide everything the only thing when you glue it is you need to put the glue only on the silhouette of the girl not everywhere <laughs> so see I'm gonna use the little fussy cut girl to apply the glue on and then glue the um, polka dot fabric I don't want folds under the flowers so this is why I'm putting the flowers there so this part is kind of flat and then inking the flower because they were not ready and I'm gonna glue the flower and then keep going on maybe I can add one more fold but I'm not even sure it depends if I have a place to to glue down as well I think that's gonna be it just gluing the flowers and I think yeah see there's no more spot to add more ink so I'm gonna cut it I tried to tear and sometimes it doesn't really tear well it's either I don't have enough fabric to to have a big a good grab of the fabric but either way you can always cut with your scissors and you use your fingers to damage it so that's it for now for this video it's long enough you saw lots of how I go about decorating the pages, getting ideas, and I, I'll keep going on in the part three of this file folder creation. Thanks for watching everyone, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.